Hey everybody, welcome to the Cowboy Slot Channel, Sunday Slot Talk with the Tech. We are your hosts, Brantley and Mark. Uh, welcome everybody, got quite a few of you in here. Special thank you to our moderators, Tammy and Susan, today. Uh, today's opening topic is how to walk away. You know, this is a common question that we get asked a lot. How many spins should somebody do? How long should you stay at a machine? How long should you stay in the casino? That's going to be our opening topic of today. But first... We have some really exciting uh, numbers to share with you guys. Um, we are now less than 500 people away from hitting 80,000 subscribers, 8-0. Uh, last week on Sunday at this exact same uh, at this exact same time last week, we had just crossed 70,000. That's a 10,000 subscriber increase in a week. It, that is absolutely crazy. So guys, if you're out there watching this, be sure if you're not yet subscribed, subscribe to the channel. We're getting really close to that 80,000. And now uh, once we cross that 80,000, we get to start our countdown to 100,000, which is going to be really, really big and very exciting. We're hoping to hit that before our uh, channel anniversary in February. So uh, hopefully we can make that happen. Also, um, our TikTok has just been going absolutely crazy. Welcome to everybody coming over from TikTok. Uh, this week alone on TikTok, we gained 75,000 followers on TikTok, and one reel alone um, had over 2 million views on it, and it's still growing. Uh, that's just on TikTok. Facebook is the same way. We've gained 14,000 followers on Facebook. So be sure, follow us on Facebook, follow us on TikTok. We're doing a lot of exciting stuff over there. And as always, we keep it all main centralized here on the YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe here on YouTube because uh, we have so much exciting stuff planned uh, for you guys. Before we go into this opening topic, we do have one uh, super, super sticker already coming in from Autumn 499 from Autumn. Autumn, thank you so much. Uh, 499 super sticker. The tips are great. Thanks. We are so happy that the tips are helping you guys out. And that really is what speaks volumes for our channel uh, is that everything here is working for you guys. It's free. It's easy to understand. And that's what we strive to do. So thank you guys. Um, so let's talk about our opening topic. Our opening topic today, common question that we get asked all the time. Uh, how long do you stay at a machine? How many spins do you do? When do you leave the casino? And Mark is going to take it over from here and tell you all about our opening topic about when to walk away. And right after that, we will jump into the Q&A. All right. Sounds good. And uh, congratulations, Brantley. Uh, great success on the channel. Uh, I can't believe that we're at 80,000. That's just <laughs> unbelievable. Every morning the last week, I've been waking up and refreshing and just shaking my head at how amazing those numbers are. So thanks to you guys. Um, you, of course, make this channel possible and you drive everything that Brantley and I decide to do on the channel. So thank you so much for your subscription, all the likes, all the comments. You know, we have such a busy live stream in here and we love it. We love that you guys are having a good time and we want to make sure that that environment continues for you. So, all right. So let's talk about today's topic. Uh, as Brantley said, you know, this is something we get asked a lot. And it's not exactly a simple answer, but let me try to break it down a little bit. So um, there's two parts to this. One, when should you stop playing a machine and walk away? And two, when should you walk away from the casino itself? So let's talk about the machine itself. So we're going to assume that you are doing the right things by playing the right machines. You're looking at those low volatile machines, especially if you just got in there and you want to start there at all, all the time you want to start there if you can. Um, the thing that's important is that there is no set amount of time that you need to play a machine to expect a certain result. Now, let me explain what I just said there. So when you sit down in a machine and you start spinning, the machine is not calculating, you know, on the seventh spin, I'm going to give him a win or on the fourth spin, I'm going to give him a win or I'm going to wait until I get about $30 from the person that's playing and then I'm going to pay him back 25 None of that happens. Every event that you do inside of a slot machine, every time you hit the bet max or the spin button or pull a handle, it is a separate event. So knowing that means that you cannot plan what is going to happen on that very next spin. Now, you don't want to just go around and probably just do one spin on every machine because that would be a lot of legwork, a lot of ticket in, ticket out, takes a lot of time. And I don't necessarily think it's that much fun either. I would recommend doing that if you're like pushing your budget, you know, maybe you're just trying to, you know, you've always wanted to try a $5 machine and you want to do one spin, go for it and do that. 
But if you're at your budget level and you're playing a machine, my best recommendation is to before you sit down and start spinning, come up with a number that you feel comfortable walking away from. And that should be your answer as to how long you play that game. We did a, a live play uh, from last week that I did at the Shoshone Rose where I did that on multiple occasions inside of the video where I said, we are going to play this down to, say, $350, and then we're going to get up and walk away and go try something else. Do that before you sit down at the machine, not while you're sitting there spinning. That's not the best time to do it because you can get caught up in the moment. You're trying to chase the bonus. I just want to see what the bonus looks like. You get really caught up. That's not the time to do it. You really want to do it before you start your spinning. So once you've decided I'm going to play it down to a certain number or I'm only going to do 10 spins, get up and walk away and go try another machine. Now, we're not saying that's because it's going through some kind of reset or the other machine is a better one to play. It's just about spreading your luck around a little bit and trying different games. There are some people like Brantley who will just sit at a pinball game and play nothing but pinball the entire time. And that's per true. That's perfectly OK. Um, but if you're new to the casino environment and you don't have your favorite game yet, uh, share the love. Go find one that you like, that you like the volatility level. Maybe you are a riskier person and you want to play something a little bit higher on the volatility. Find your machine. But the way you should do it is by limiting the number of spins that you plan to do when you sit down. This is especially important on those high volatile games like Dragon Link, Lightning Link, Don't Feed the Dragons. All those types of games you do not want to sit down and start blindly playing. Those, it is an absolute must that you decide how many spins you're going to do before you sit down on those machines because they are built to have very long dry spells. And if you start to get in the mode where you feel like you're invested and you have to chase that bonus, you're in for some trouble. So if you're going to play a high volatile game, try to make up your mind before you sit down on how many spins you're going to do. Maybe you'll get lucky. Maybe you won't, but you won't be putting your entire bankroll through it. And that's what we want you to be careful with. So I hope that helps with uh, individual slot machines and kind of what you can do to better your, your time and uh, your extend your bankroll and all those types of things. So second is when to leave the casino. So this one's always really tough, especially if you know that you're going to be there for multiple days. Let's say that you're going to Las Vegas or Reno or New Jersey or somewhere, and you know you're going to be there for four or five days, right? What if on the first day you get there, you hit a good jackpot and you're like, well, I can't leave. I'm here for another three days. What do I do? It's very enticing to say, wow, I'm going to have a hell of a time these next three days and I'm going to blow through this jackpot and see if I can get even more. And you might end up actually digging into your bankroll even more, even though on the first day you hit that big jackpot. So what you need to do is, again, budget your days, decide how much you plan to spend each day. And then anything that you have over that, pocket it, put it in the safe, uh, the cash box, anything like that, so that you walk out with your winnings for that particular day. Now, if you live close to a casino, let's say that you go to your local I would say leave as soon as you get a nice hit, double your money or something, leave and come back another day. Your next trip to the casino is going to be that much more exciting if you know that you are up from the last visit. If you are down from the last visit, the next time you go into the casino, you're going to be in this mindset that you need to chase back your wins and you're going to start putting more and more and more into it. And then that cycle starts where you're constantly chasing your losses. And that's very dangerous, but it's very easy. Even if you're a very strong-willed person, this could be something that you could fall into. So if you are going to be at a casino that's close by and you go there often, go in with a plan before you even walk in. This is before you even go to a machine and say, you know what? Today, I'm going to double my money. And as soon as that happens, even if it happens in the first two minutes I'm there, I'm out the door and I'm back home. And then the other side, I will lose up to 300. And if I lose the 300, I'm out the door and I'll go home. I'm not going to go to the ATM. I'm not going to go back to the car and get more cash. I'm not going to borrow cash from friends or anything like that. I'm just going to leave and come back another day. It's very hard to get your mind kind of gets fixed on the environment that you're in. You're inside of a casino and those slot machines are enticing you to keep playing. I didn't get the bonus today. I want to see a pinball bonus so bad. I just got to keep chasing it until I get it. You know, if you ever are starting to think that, that is a dangerous path and we don't want to see you get into that. So, be smart about, you know, how long you're going to stay at a machine before you sit down and start playing and then how long you're going to be in the casino itself before you go in. So those will make you a better person when it comes to slot machine gambling or gambling in general. What I mean by that is that you're not going to leave depressed and mad at the world and 
wake up the next day and feel like you got to do it all over again. <laughs> That's it's a very dangerous feeling and we don't want you to fall into that. So hopefully, hopefully those tips help. And, um, we always wish you the best of luck inside of the casino. Now, before we get into the questions, I wanted to say that, um, you know, we, we always get a lot of questions in these live streams and uh, we do three of these a week. So we have the show today and then we also have member Mondays. So if you're a member of the channel, come in uh, tomorrow, I think 7 p.m. Central time and uh, or maybe it's 6 p.m. Central time. Um, Brantley, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> 7 p.m. Central 7 time. 7 p.m. Central time. Sorry. 7, okay. 7 p.m. Central. Okay. I'm getting, you had it right. I should look at a calendar, you know. Um, so come in for Member Monday if you're a member. It's very low, low key. You can really get your questions answered there. And then on Wednesday, uh, we do this as well. If we don't get to your question in this live stream, it is not because we're ignoring you. It could be because we've been answering that question a lot in the last couple of streams. So go back and watch those streams. All of those are available. We don't hide them or unpublish them or anything. So if we miss your question, it's it's purely not because we're trying to pass it by and we don't want to answer it anymore. You know, we're just trying to get to all these new questions and we know we have a lot of new subscribers here and we want to get to your questions, too. So go ahead and start asking those questions. And uh, Brantley, let's uh, go ahead and jump in and uh, start tackling these. Absolutely. And we did have a lot of questions come in, um, come in during the during the topic, guys. Good. Um, welcome to all the new people. We already have 231 of you here and we we have already pretty much backlogged um, on questions. We do an opening topic um, on most, uh, mostly all of our shows will do an opening topic and we don't uh, start those Q and A's until after that opening topic. So, um, so we will try to get through a lot of these questions the best we can, uh, but it might take us a little bit. So again, uh, just bear with us. We will try to get through all of your questions, guys. We appreciate it. But we do get very busy here on the live stream, so we try to answer as many of them as we possibly can. We'll start off with this one. Uh, uh, Dallas, going to visit the Rose next weekend. Other than Penball and uh, Double Diamond, what other slots do you like at that location? Um, also, are their table games fairly active, or are they only open certain times? So the Rose does not have table games right now. Um, the only casino that does have table games is going to be Wind River, which is only about 25, 30 minutes away. Um, other games at the Rose, um, honestly, uh, if you're coming in this weekend, there is a must-hit by Progressive by Ainsworth that is getting very, very close to the top. It's actually Thundercash. The Thundercash Progressive is getting very close to the top. Uh, to my knowledge, it still has not hit. Uh, the last time I checked. So if it is still there, when you come in, give that one a shot because you have a really good chance of possibly hitting that must hit by progressive, no, uh, must hit by progressive. So uh, yeah, definitely um, have fun when you're here and uh, for table games, check out uh, Wind River as well, because it's not too far away. It's only about 25, 30 minutes away. Good question. Yep. And best of luck. And Cynthia Byrne says, hi, guys. I was wondering how the two of you met. You work so well together, and it seems like you've known each other for a while. It does seem like we've known each other for a while, but honestly, it's only been since, I think, April. Um, yeah. We both had YouTube channels, and we both kind of tackled this in different ways. And we started talking, and we did a, a video together on Top Dollar, and it was a huge success. Everybody really liked it. And so we just started to team up, and slowly but surely, you know, here we are just trying to pump out as much content as we can. So, uh, yep. yeah, I guess I we can deal have, with Brantley we, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we, we both, uh, we both have the exact same goal, which is to educate right. with the facts, um, you know, and not, you know, dispel all of the myths and all of the rumors. You know, we've both worked with slot machines for uh, a very, very long time. And we both know these machines inside and out. Um, we, you know, we both know people inside the industry and so we deliver our tips and our information based on the facts and not guessing. Um, and that we both had that same goal and we do, we work very well together. So I'm happy to have Mark here. Mark has been a tremendous help, uh, to Likewise, the channel. Really. So I, I'm very happy to, uh, have Mark here. Uh, question here. Uh, hey, Cowboy Slots, I found an enforcer in my local casino. Not sure how to bet, uh, how to bet for best results. What would you recommend? So um, with the enforcer, uh, it is a must hit by progressive. The cool thing about the game is you do not have to play max or you don't have to play any specific way to hit that progressive number. Uh, strategy for this game is if it is really, really close to that number. So if it's a 10,000 must hit by and if it's at like 9,900 or 9,800 or higher, 
my recommendation is to bet low and slow. You want to be at that game for as long as you possibly can. So you don't want to burn through your money really fast. Just bet minimum bets for a while. Maybe you can even bet as low as a dollar on it. Just bet a dollar on it. Just anything to just stay at the game for a long period of time, because as you get closer to that number, you have a better chance of hitting. Now, the higher your bet, the more it will add to that progressive and the quicker it will get there. So you do kind of have a trade-off. Um, for that game, I would recommend definitely want to play all available lines at least. So play all of your available lines. So if it's a five line, 10 line, 20 line, whatever, play all of your available lines. That way, if you get the bonus, then the bonus can be a lot more fruitful when it, because it has those holding wilds. So that's what I would recommend for the game of Enforcer. But good question. Yeah, very good. And good luck out there. Yes, best of uh, luck. Spend to win says last night I was able to hit the double diamond jackpot, a $1 double diamond haywire, hit the jackpot in four spins. Guys, we say this all the time, but the, the, the three double diamonds out of all the top line jackpots that exist on machines, those hit more frequently than any others. Now, that does not mean that you're going to go and hit it all the time. It's still a very thing, hard thing to hit, but compared to all the other machines, it's, it's relatively easy to hit those. We hear these stories all the time. Um, so, and the question you had is, what are your thoughts on Pink Diamond? Never played it, but seems like a good machine. So Pink Diamond is a lot like Double Gold in a way where it's it's the, the, the multipliers and the wilds are combined into the symbols. And I don't typically like those. I think it adds to the volatility a little bit. Um, I, have, I do have Pink Diamond on one of my machines here that I've played, the free games version. And it's really tough. It's very tough to get the free games. And when you do, I never have gotten one that's hit, hit it out of the park. So I'm not a personal fan of it. Brantley, do you have any opinion on the... Uh... You know, same same opinion with me. You know, the, a lot of times those, those particular games like Double Gold, Pink Diamonds, they can be really deceptive because it looks like it would be a really low volatile game. But they, the fact, like you just said, Mark, the, the multipliers and the, the wilds are all built into the symbols. And then you've essentially got a lot of different symbols with those on there. So it, it makes it higher in volatility. And then even like, you know, with double gold, because people ask about that game a lot, you look at the fact of if anything hits the line, it could be a, a seven and a bar and a, you know, another seven or whatever. It doesn't even have to match up as if anything hits the line, you get paid something. That's, that's a feature that's, that's adding to the volatility uh, of the game. So just uh, don't be deceived by it. Um, it's not the highest volatile game. Don't get us wrong. It's still lower than most games in the casino would be, but it is higher than just say a regular double diamond. So I pretty much have the same thoughts on it. Uh, let's see question here from member Alan. Um, uh, Alan says, I have a friend who's had terrible year playing uh, very risky penny machines. Uh, he seems to lose all the time and get upset and frustrated. It's about the machines that you play, guys. It, it is it really all is. about the machines that you play. Listen, you know, you can have a penny machine, you know, right next to the buffet or right by the front door or, you know, anything like that. That doesn't mean anything. The It's the type of game and how the game was built. Those penny machines have the lowest hold percentage. The penny machines also are usually attached to extremely high volatile games, which high volatile games, as we know, have long periods of dead spins and only occasionally will get a good win. Also with penny games, it's deceptive because everybody always sees, oh, it's just a penny, but you're spending 500 credits or more. There's some penny machines I've seen people playing, you know, like 2000 credits. You're spending $20 a spin on a game that has right. the lowest hold return. You could go play pinball at a $5 denomination, three credit version for $15 a spin, save yourself $5 and actually have the chance to hit a jackpot. So that's why we always recommend, you know, don't play those penny machines. There are some penny machines, unless you absolutely know what you're doing or you absolutely know you have a goal in mind. And that's why we try to educate you guys on the different games that are available out there. Because these games are all going to act differently. Where they're at on the floor doesn't matter. Time of day doesn't matter. It's all about their volatility and the type of game and how the game was actually designed. And from the sounds of it, your friend is playing, again, like you said, very risky penny games. So you're taking the high volatility plus the penny. It's just not, it's not a good situation. And this is a situation that 
millions of people find themselves in. And then inevitably what happens is they go to the casino and they're playing these games and they they lose or they you know they they lose their ass or they continue to lose and then they decide to go in on a you know a Tuesday because they've never been on a Tuesday and then they just so happen to win a little amount and they think oh that's the connection it's the day of the week no it's just the type of game that you're playing so i would tell your friend this you know how much is he betting how much i would ask him how hey what what are you normally spending per spin? If you're spending five dollars on a penny machine, go play a five dollar machine at even a single credit, and you'll have a much better chance. So, uh, yeah, don't get sucked into that trap, guys. It's a big trap out there. Those the penny machines and everything, and that's why we tell you it's all about the type of game that you play. And there is a reason why when you walk into a high limit slot room, and we've talked about this a lot. When you walk into a high limit slot room. Those are the machines that the high limit players like to play. The people that play slots on a regular basis, the people that are used to getting jackpots, that are used to getting every benefit out of the casino, those are the games they play. And that's what they have in the high limit room. So if you walk into the high limit room and you see pinball, you see top dollar, you see all these other low volatile games, and then you go out onto the floor and it's a sea of penny machines, that's kind of telling you something. And then also, not only that, but some of those games in the high limit room are also on the main floor. Right. So if you go out, Look if out. you go into the high limit room and you see that they have a whole bunch of double diamond machines, go out onto the main floor and see if they have a cheaper double diamond machine, a 25 cent or a 50 cent. Chances are they probably will. So it's again, it's the observation, which is what we teach you guys. You know, tip number one out of our lesson series is look around the casino, walk around the entire casino and look at the games. You're not looking for location. You're not looking for what the buffet is serving that day. You're not looking for if the promo, if there's a promotion going on. No, you're looking at the type of games that that casino has. And some casinos have bad games. There are some casinos out there that honestly, they just have terrible games. Go to another casino if that casino doesn't have it. So uh, I know I've kind of went on a rant there, but it's a really important, uh, really, really important rant because that's the biggest thing that we it teach really you guys is. here on this channel. And, you know, we're going to we keep doing more breakdowns on this because that's what we really want to instill into you guys. If you guys if you guys come to this channel, if you only take one thing away from you, just one, if you if you only had to learn one thing, just learn that all Slot machines are not created equally. Different machines have different volatility factors. Different machines have different, they act differently. They, they do these things. So change up your games. Change up your games. So uh, we'll really quick, we had, uh, we had two super chats come in while I was doing my little rant. Uh, $5, <laughs> uh, $5 super chat from David. Uh, off to visit a casino in December. We'll have the rope to jackpot poker chip at all times to remind me of what I've learned and watched on this channel. Yes, thank you very much, David. Guys, we do sell poker chips on this channel. We do sell wristbands. We do sell... Uh, uh, lanyards and all of that. Uh, it's really, really fun stuff. Guys, if you want to help out uh, and help support the channel, uh, check out our poker chips. They're really cool. Um, they come in a wide variety of colors. They're on our main website at ropethejackpot.com. Uh, so a lot of fun goodies there. So thank you, David. I appreciate that. Uh, and then we have another uh, another one from uh, John. Uh, question, does playing more lines on a game like Dragon Link um, or just a minimum of five to ten lines good enough with... Uh, jump betting to higher multipliers. So on a game like Dragon Link, the thing is, is you you want to focus more on if you, if you are going to play Dragon Link and you know, we don't recommend it unless you've, you know, unless you have the high budget to do it and you can withstand the swings and you know what you're getting into. Um, really want to focus on the progressive amounts more than anything. You want to focus on the progressive amounts and the denomination. Anytime that you sit down at a Dragon Link or lightning link or locket link or whatever the hell kind of link you're wanting to wanting to play you want to cycle through the cycle through all the denominations and look to see what denomination has what progressive attached to it and you want to follow that because some it doesn't matter um and you can win you can win those jackpots on minimum bet as long as you're within that uh within that denomination so you know I have seen people sit down at the Dragon Link machine and they just bet, 
one line, one credit minimum, absolute minimum, and they still hit the grand. You still qualify for it. So um, just understand your bankroll and understand understand your game when you're sitting down to it. Um, the, the lines really doesn't matter unless you're trying to get really good line hits or trying to get a really good bonus out of it. But if you're just playing for the progressives, just cycle through and make sure you're looking at all of those progressives. And then we did have another super sticker coming in, uh, $1.99 super sticker from Cheap Slots and Cheap Gambling. Guys, thank you so much for those. We really do greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, Mark, I will hand it off to you for your question. Right. Finally, <laughs> after my long rant. <laughs> and take a drink of water. Right. All right. So Rolando Hernandez says, hello, thanks for the tips. Well, you're welcome. If I play a one play, one pay line game at one credit versus the max three credits, are my odds the same? Should I play max credits on two dollar denom and six dollar per spin, or one credit at five dollar spin? You give me a math problem here. Let me make it really simple here. So, the thing is, is that we typically always recommend that you play max bet on machines that give you some kind of benefit to doing so. And most, in most games, they do. Um, the higher level jackpot will be higher than just playing a single credit, that type of thing. The odds between, you know, when you're talking about a $2 machine, a $1 machine and a $5 machine and trying to decide which you bet max on and all that kind of stuff, the, the guys, the, the percentage is so small and you wouldn't really notice it in any kind of individual event of playing those machines. Um, I would always go to the lowest denomination, but play max then go to the highest and not play max if there is a benefit to playing max. And I hope that helps. It's not true for every single game. We always try to tell you to play the highest denomination that you can afford. But when you're talking about whether to play max or single credit, there could be a decision there that you need to go down in denomination in order to be eligible for the max bet benefit. So I hope pinball, that helps. Pinball double yeah, gold pinball is a good gold. example of that. <laughs> Freaking uh, go down a denomination <laughs> uh, if you're playing the brand new pinball. Right. Um, and uh, I, I want to pull this up just because it, it actually kind of is on topic here of, of what uh, your question was. Um, uh, Bonus Hunters Entertainment says uh, some slots will require higher bets for a better probability. This is true, guys. And the thing is, is this is why we always teach you, you know, always walk around your casino and look. But then when you do decide on a game to sit down at a game, Please read the game rules. You have to read the game rules and understand the game because you don't know. There are some games out there that will require a max bet in order to get the most benefit out of the game. And then if you don't play max on that game, then you could be screwing yourself over by missing out on a bonus or missing out on you know, uh, something else. So always read your game rules because there are different slots and different games play out differently. So very good. A uh, very good comment on that. Thank you for thank you for posting that. I appreciate it. Um, and uh, let's see here. I'll take one. Uh, Mark, if you, yeah, if you've yeah, got Patty one, Phil I got says, a... uh, We are going on a Royal Caribbean cruise. What slots do you suggest? I think I saw your question last live stream, so I'm glad I could get to it this time. Uh, so that's a tough one because um, I believe that the cruise ships, they really rotate machines out quite a bit. And from the very small amount of videos I've seen on people playing on cruise ships, it's a lot of penny video style machines. So I think it still holds true with everything that we've been saying on this channel. Go and try to look for those old classic three reels. I have a big suspicion that they do not exist on cruise ships anymore. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, because I've not been on a cruise in a very long time. But um, from all the videos and stuff that I've seen, it's mostly all the video slots, the lightning links, the dragon links, all those games are on there. And uh, so I don't know. Very good question. Um, I'll go ahead and take two here. This one it. is a, this one's a different question. And you know what? I kind of, I kind of like this A question from autumn uh, really changing it up here. Where does the tradition come from to touch the screen? Um, you know, guys gambling, has always been a very, 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 very superstitious thing. You know, people have the craziest things when it comes to gambling. You know, there are some people out there that are like, you know, oh, I was wearing this shirt the last time I hit a jackpot. So I have to always wear this shirt anytime I'm in the casino, or I have to wear mismatched socks, or I have to rub the screen or tap the glass or, you know, anything like that. Guys, people, you know, people have always done that. Um, so where does the tradition come from? I think it's just our human nature of being superstitious. Um, you know, some people do it to have fun. 
you know, they like to add a little fun into the game, you know, stuff like that. Hey, as long as you're not beating on the machine or, you know, like slapping the button really hard or, you know, punching the, the machine, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But there are a lot of people, you know, and a lot of times you can go to the casino and you'll see, you know, people bring, uh, when I worked in the casino, we would see, uh, you know, these little ladies come in and they would sit down and they would literally like use the machine like a shelf and they would put like, you know, pictures of their family up or, <laughs> and, you know, like, you know, little statues or, or little lucky coins. Or uh, there was this one lady that she used to like, she had a lucky scarf and she would like tie the scarf around the machine. Like she would pretty much decorate the whole machine <laughs> with like a scarf and some That's coins I'd love and to some see that. pictures. And, um, you know, people just do, people just do that. It, you know, I think it's, it's just the human nature, uh, right. the human nature aspect of it. So that's, that's kind of where it comes from. Uh, and then I'll take another one, Mark, if you go don't mind. Uh, no, question here from Michelle on the lower volatile slots. Uh, do you recommend letting the machine spin or double tapping the spin button? Does it help or hurt the odds? It doesn't do anything to the odds. It's really player preference, uh, whatever you want to do. Um, there's no, uh, there, there's no, changing of odds or manipulating the game again you know the the slot machines cannot have any feature built in where the player can manipulate their outcome or their odds uh, at all um on any slot on any slot machine so uh you know if you want to you know fast stop it or you know double tap it or whatever it's not gonna it's not gonna do anything uh it's really just kind of your preference and uh, Perry has a question. When I play top dollar, what's the average time that I should get a top dollar? How many times after I hit one? So there, there's a lot of different versions of top dollar, but I'll tackle two of them. Uh, double top dollar, the average is one in 41. And regular top dollar, the average is one in 46. But that is an average. It can take many more than that. It can take many less than that. But it's just kind of an average kind of middle of the road there. So that's what to expect from top dollar. Um, it does hit more frequently than uh, pinball in general. But the overall average of the offers are much lower than pinball bonuses. So that's kind of the trade off there. So, all right, I'll take another one real quick. So, Zachary has a question. I had $300 buy in and made it to 1,000 ticket and lost it all. Definitely important to know when to leave the property. Yeah. yeah. This, is, Zachary, you are not alone. Uh, this is a story I think every gambler had, can tell. <laughs> it's just, it's the way it works. Like, it's, it's very hard to have the willpower to stop, especially when you just got there. I think some of the, you know, the worst things that can happen is for you to get a really big hit the moment you walk into the casino because it's really hard to say, oh, I, it's time to go. You know, well, I just got here. I'm just going to play it a little bit longer. And before you know it, it's all gone. And so having that willpower and, you know, having the cash box and putting the money in the cash box, those types of things can make it a heck of a lot easier because, like I said, you can, you can be the strongest person in the world. But, man, when you're in there and you're in the – in the mix of everything in the thick of it, yeah. it's hard. It's really hard. You know, the biggest thing for me, and this is what, you know, I even find myself getting caught up in this sometimes. Um, you know, if I drive all the way out to the casino, you know, which for me is about two hours away. If I drive all the way out to the casino and I hit a jackpot right away, as soon as I walk in the door, it's hard because I don't want to just go home. I just drove two <laughs> right. hours just to get there. So it's right. like, did I just drive two hours for a three minute visit and i'm like well i guess i can play a little bit more and that's where they get you and that's the hard part is it you really know is. you, you really have is. to understand when you get ready to go to the casino even if it's someplace far away understand that it could be a very very short trip for two reasons either you <laughs> right. lose it all really quick or you win right. um but just know it can be a very short trip and that's a you know that's one thing that uh you know, we, we maybe we'll we'll try to think of some new methods or, or, or something to to help you guys out to leave the casino, because it is frustrating if you walk into the casino and it's like, hey, I just got here. I just drove two hours to the casino. I walk in the door, click jackpot. Well, now what do I do? Do I leave? Do I go home? Do I, you know, so it's hard, especially when you drive uh, far away to the casino. Uh, I'm going to take two really quick. Go First one it. is a 999 super chat from Adam. Adam, thank you so much. Guys, the super chats and the thank super you, stickers really do to uh really do go to help our help out our channel uh greatly. We greatly do appreciate that, guys. Uh are there any specific casinos in Reno area that you would recommend? It's really hard to find the old school games. Um I have not been to Reno in several years, so I I am hesitant to make a recommendation myself. 
because I have not been there anytime recently. However, if there is anybody out there in the chat window that has gone to Reno uh, recently, um, help us out. Let Adam uh, let Adam know uh, if there is anything around. Uh, maybe uh, Gamble the Globe, if you've got any ideas on where those older machines might be in Reno uh, as of uh, current date. Um, let us, uh, let us know. And then the second one that I want to take this one, you know, I might go into a, a, a rant on this one because I just did a short on this today. Uh, this one is from cheap slots and cheap gambling. People still don't understand that there is a difference between a slot machine and a skill based game. Yes. Yes, there is guys. One of the biggest problems that we seem to see a lot of in this industry there is only one type of slot machine. A slot machine, by definition, is an individual unit that relies on a random number generator. If it does not fall under that category, it is not a slot machine. If it relies on horse racing, if it relies on the lottery system, if it relies on bingo, skill, anything else, it is not a slot machine. If it's a game on your phone, it's not a slot machine. So a lot of times people will ask, they're like, well, how can we, you know, uh, what about slot machines on your phone? Or what about online slots? They're not slots. They are not slot machines, guys. They are a game that mimics and looks like a slot machine. They work completely different. They're not regulated the same. They don't work the same. And there's really nothing much you can do about those. So when we give you these tips, you know, we're talking about slot machines, so anything outside of what a slot machine legally is defined as, then other, you know, other tips and other things will have to apply to that. So like historical horse racing, you play it completely different. It looks and feels and acts just like a slot machine. You put your money in, it's got reels, you spin the button, you know, stuff comes up, but it acts and looks it uh, plays out completely different. It's the same with skill-based games, guys. These are not slot machines. Thank you very much for that comment. I will try to keep it short. But yes, that is a huge misconception. Um, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people get get wrapped up in um, get wrapped up in thinking, oh, it's you know, this is a slot machine. It is not a slot machine. The game of bingo. So you know, for example, because there's a lot of class two facilities out there. Guys, class two server units are regulated completely different. They work completely different. They work, don't work on a random number generator at all. So when you go in and you're, you know, if you go into a place like WinStar and you're going to play bingo based servers, you're not playing slot machines. You're playing bingo based terminals. That's what they are. Even though they look like slot machines, they play like slot machines. They are, you're playing a bingo based terminal. So just be aware of that. Be aware of that, guys. Um, that when we when we're talking about slot machines, we're talking about the legal definition of what a slot machine is. So uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, I really do appreciate it. And five dollar super sticker from Francis. Francis, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. Um, all right, Mark, I'll let you take a question yeah, here. Fun. And thank you, Francis. I know you you're a regular donator. We really do appreciate yes. it. Francis. Thank you, Francis. Thank you so and uh, AccUSA has a good question. What are your thoughts on the claw machines with the balls? How are they programmed? Is it tension, ball diameter, or just luck? So this is kind of piggybacking off of what Brantley just said. They are actually still slot machines. They have, whenever you put the claw out and the claw goes down, it is already decided whether you're supposed to win or not. And in fact, if it accidentally drops the ball when it shouldn't have, it gives you another try until it finally captures the ball and puts it in the little bucket to register the win. So it's, it's a, it, it appears to be a, a claw machine like you would find in a carnival or some, you know, boardwalk or something like that, but it plays out just like a slot machine. Your fate yep. is decided the moment that you start moving the claw. It's just another way to do it. You know, don't think that you have any kind of power over it. It's really funny. Cause I did see, uh, I know Bellagio has one of those and I see people playing it and going to the side of the glass and looking to see if it's lined up. It makes no difference at all. If you do that, <laughs> yeah, it's going to go down. It's going to do what it's going to do. And then I'll take another one real quick. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Chuck Beto says, uh, do the high limit rooms have high volatility games? I'm trying to understand where the best areas to play with a large budget. Uh, yes, they do. They do have a mix, but you will notice that the lower volatile games vastly outnumber the high volatility games. If you take, for example, the high limit room in MGM Grand, there are probably 30 
old classic S2000 reels from top dollar, pinball, double diamond, triple diamond, red, white, and blue sevens. All of those are in there. But they only have two dragon links. They had uh, two of the huff and puffs, and they had some others on the other side. I don't remember what was over there, but it's largely outnumbered by the low volatile games. And that's what you mostly see people playing when you go in there. Uh, so really, when it comes to the high limit rooms, if you're trying to find the best place, uh, best ones to play, look for those classic reels, just the physical reels, um, the older style machines like the top dollar over here, those types of things. That's what you that's what you want to really look for. Good luck out there, Chuck. Exactly. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, take uh, take this one here from Bonus Hunters Entertainment Server versus Standalone. You know, here there's there's a lot. This is a very very in depth uh, in depth topic, but I will cover a couple of things uh, that are important to know. So first all, first of all, um, you know we're we're going into 2023. Obviously, you know we're making this video live. Uh, Mark and I both keep very, very current on everything in the casino. We talk to, you know, we talk to casinos every day. We, you know, we go to these events. We went to G2E, which G2E showcases the technology coming up, uh, coming up for, um, the casino industry as a whole. So this is not old information. As of right now, the amount of server-based casinos in the United States is very, very, very tiny. Most of the casinos that you go to are not server-based. Now, when we talk about server-based casinos, I want you to keep something in mind. There are separate systems. So server. when we're talking about server-based slots, we're talking about where the server is connected to the logic portion of the machine. The player's card and player tracking is completely separate. That is a completely separate network. That does not, just because the player system talks to the casino does not mean that the logic portion talks to the network. So just don't get that confused. Also, pros and cons. A lot of people, for some reason, think server gaming is bad. It's really not. You can win some good money at server-based uh, server based facilities. Um, Windstar in Oklahoma, they do have some Class 3 games now. Um, the, so they're, they are starting to get some more of those Class 3 games in. But predominantly, uh, they are mostly bingo-based uh, bingo terminals. Uh, they've got the VGTs, the red screens, all of that. People win a lot of money there, uh, really high amounts. I'm actually shocked because I've seen a lot of people go to Winstar and it's like, you know, people are winning $100,000 on a quarter machine. So, you know, it, it really, and it could be just because of the giant size of their casino, but that's how they're able to do it. Because when you do play the server-based bingo terminals, you're playing against everybody else on the floor. Well, the size of that casino is so massive, there's a lot of people constantly playing. So those jackpots can get very, very big. Um, server base is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, with standalone units, standalone units are easier for you to determine what is a good machine and what is not a good machine. Server-based gaming, you really can't do that. It's really difficult to do it because the game is not reliant on itself, it's reliant on an outside source. Whereas a standalone unit, you can look at the game, you can look through the game rules, you can look at your pay tables, you can actually look and see and determine for yourself, is this going to be a game that I want to play? Is this going to be a high volatile, a low volatile? You can make that determination. So there's pros and cons to both sides uh, on server versus standalone. But guys, the biggest thing to know is just know that not the amount of casinos today that are actual server-based, when we say actual server-based, we're talking about the logic portion, is this big. There are not that many. It is extremely small. Every single casino in Arizona is standalone. Every single casino in Nevada is standalone. Every single casino uh, here in Wyoming is standalone. They do have server systems, but it's not for the logic portion. It is for the players. It is for accounting and player tracking. It has nothing to do with actual the machines relying on the server. So very good question. I appreciate that. And sorry for my little rant. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite okay. That's where the, the knowledge comes out. Exactly. Uh, I'll take two real quick here. So Karen R says, are there rules regarding employees playing at casinos where they're employed? Yes, there are. Yes, there yes. are. Um, and another one. 
Genevieve says, I watch another YouTuber on here and says the info is completely different. It's hard to know what advice to take. Yeah, I understand that. And, you know, I want to, I do want to mention something real quick. So, you know, everybody is free to do what they want on YouTube. We're not here to judge anybody. We never talk about other channels. Um, and that's, that's always going to be the case with us. We want people to do what they want to do, just as they allow us to do what we want to do. <laughs> but the one thing I want you to just take in is just to consider the source of the information. And this just isn't for slot machines or gambling or casinos is for everything that you find on YouTube or on the internet, internet in general. Consider the source. We try very hard to back everything we have with talking to people in the industry. Um, Brantley actually being in the industry and working for several years, knowing the policies inside and out. Um, I've been working on machines for four or five years from the programming side to fixing them, repairing them, know what's networked, what isn't, all of that type of stuff. But we also go out and we have good partnerships with casinos, not partnerships like paid partnerships, but partnerships in where we send them the videos and say, is this accurate or not before we post it? You know, we take a lot of pride in that. And we continue to evolve with making more and more uh, connections inside of the industry to make sure that all the information that we're providing to you guys is not conjecture or feelings or something we've noticed, but we don't think it's we don't know if it's true or not. Like if that were the case, we would either disclose before we say it that we're speculating on it or we will just not tell you at all. And that is back to the very first question we took about why we started this channel and that we work well together. It's because we are aligned in that philosophy. Our philosophy is to provide you the best information that is accurate, that is backed up by talking to people in the industry, and we will continue to do that. And so just consider the source. If you like the other person and you want to listen to the other person and you think it sounds better for you, that is totally fine. We're not here to judge you at all. But just consider what the source is compared to us and then make your own decision at the end. And that's the way it's always going to be. So thanks for your right. comment. And, and, uh, and two, you know, I, I just kind of, you know, wanted to add to that a little bit. Um, you know, guys, anybody can, you know, Obviously, the internet is a blessing and a curse because you know the internet can be a vast, uh, you know, vast place where you can go to get knowledge on everything, but it can also be a curse because it gives everybody a platform. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there that are giving or, in some cases, selling, um, uh, you know, tips for the casino or slots or anything like that. None of them have actually worked in the casino. None of them ever have actual casino industry experience. And that's the biggest thing that you should consider. If you're going to go in for surgery, do you want to talk to the doctor and the surgeon? Or do you want to talk to some guy out on the street who, oh, well, I saw it. So I think I know how it's done. Think of it that way. Who do you, who, who do you want to listen to? Do you want to listen to the surgeon that's actually going to be doing the surgery and that's been doing it for years? Or do you want to listen to somebody on the street who's never actually done it and just, well, I watched a video, so I think I know how it's done. And that's a, a lot of times. And what we notice too is, you know, a lot of, a lot of times there is so much speculation out there and that's why our channel exists because we exist to get rid of the speculation. And also too, you know, if we do make a mistake at any point or if information changes, we evolve to that. We adapt to that. Um, you know, if, you know, several years down the line, if server gaming becomes the big thing, then we will adapt to that and we will start teaching that and we will, we will modify our teachings to that. And that's really kind of the sign of, you know, some, you know, something that you should listen to versus something that you shouldn't listen to, but always make your own determination guys really do. Um, I'll take this one. Uh, Keith, uh, Keith has asked us a couple of times, do, uh, all of your tips apply in Canada. So for the most part, yes, but just always keep in mind, slot machines are very, very legally regulated. So your laws in your country uh, or your province might be different than those of down here in the United States. Um, so always keep, always keep something, you know, keep that in mind. Absolutely. But for the most part, you know, and that's the great thing about volatility, guys, is the machines, when the machines are designed, they're given a volatility index at the factory. That volatility index is listed on the par sheet. That par sheet is then given to the casinos for the casinos to make the decision of do they want to buy this game or do they not want to buy this game. If the casinos use volatility as their purchasing deciding factor, then you should be using it as your factor of whether you want to well play said. it or not. And well volatility said. is not a made up term. It's on the par sheets. It's on the purchase agreements. It's on all the documentation between the casinos and the manufacturers. You can even go on the manufacturer's websites in many cases and check volatility for yourself. 
um, volatility doesn't change uh, internationally. So if a triple stars machine is built, it doesn't matter what the payback percentage is. It doesn't matter what the casino does to it. It doesn't matter where it goes. Its volatility is going to be the same. And that's the biggest factor that you should be using when you determine what machine to play. And yes, you can use that in Canada. Very well said. And yeah, little Joe, a uh, technical question. I'll make it quick. I don't want to lose you guys. <laughs> Mark, uh, have super jackpot party. Fun game, by the way. After boot up game plays with screen is completely dark, is this just a bad monitor? So here's how you tell. If you see during boot up something on the screen and then it disappears when the game launches, then that means it is a bad video card. If you don't see anything during the boot up process, it's most likely a bad monitor. So that's how you can tell. The video card does not kick in until the game actually launches on those WMS machines. So that's just something to keep in mind. So that could be it. And I'll take another one real quick, Brantley, if you don't mind. And, uh, and Brad, uh, Mark, you have a you have a super chat for um, question for you. Okay, okay, I'll do it right after this one. Then uh, Brad Richel says, "Do cruise ships offer rated players from other cruise lines with offers?" I did see Carnival doing that, so I sent them my rating. Um, I guess you're talking about like pairing up, like you can prove that you're platinum NGM and you get a better standing with Carnival. Uh, a lot of properties do have um, relationships with them. I think MGM is uh, Royal Caribbean, I think. Um, I can't remember which one it is, but uh, I think that they probably do have status sync ups there where you can get your status. So, And uh, what was the... God, I got to scroll all the way down here. <laughs> uh, tw uh, 1246. 1246. Okay. If you, want, if you have it, just put it up real quick. Yeah. And Ryan says, hey, Mark, what do you do full time and how y'all already so good on camera? Uh, it's kind of funny. Um, well, I am a software developer uh, full time. That's what my normal job is. And then I uh, service, sell and restore uh, slot machines as a side business. And I get to keep the ones that I love. So these are the ones that I love at the moment. Um, why are you so good on camera? I, You know. The funny thing is, is Brantley and I are introverts by nature. <laughs> and so it's like very much so very, we much are very introverts. shy and not approachable, but this has really changed myself personally. And I think Brantley could probably say the same that oh, yeah. we just, it just seemed to work out. I don't know why I can't explain it, but um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm coming out of my shell a little bit more than I used to be. So, <laughs> but I appreciate the comment. Thank you so much. And thanks yeah. for the super so chat. So, Mark, is that what you went to college for? Your software yeah, development? Yeah, software developer. Okay, yep. that's yep. awesome. Absolutely. That's awesome. Uh, question here from uh, uh, German 500. My casino is reintroducing the three reels with different denoms and with uh, bonuses. Are they still low in volatility? Uh, I'll answer this in two parts. First of all, the casino's three reel slot machines are actually getting more popular and they're starting to come back, guys. Uh, not, not just in the older cabinets, but... Um, the newer cabinets as well. The new Diamond RS cabinets coming out from IGT are three real uh, slot machines as well. And then not only that, but a lot of these older slot machines like these behind me, a lot of casinos are actually bringing them out of retirement and bringing them back because you guys are making them more popular. So they're bringing them back. And that's why I say, you know, these casinos, they listen to you guys. They want to know what you guys want to play. So a lot of those machines are coming out of retirement and they're making it back to the floor. And yes, they are making some changes. They're changing it up on denominations. You know, they're adding different games to, you know, different games to the cabinets and so on and so forth. Um, as for the volatility with bonuses, always remember that each game is going to be slightly different. So you want to kind of, you can make the determination on if it's high or if it's low, uh, Obviously, by just kind of looking at it and feeling it out, it would it would be helpful to know which uh, which games in particular they're bringing because it's hard to say. Because if it's a you know, are we talking a you know a three reel you know five line free games uh, type game, or are we talking a pinball, or are we talking a top dollar? They each have their own different level of volatility. Um, some of them can be still, some of them can be high, uh, but you know, not always. So again, it really it really just depends. It really just depends. And uh, really quick, I'll, I'll pop this up. Um, uh, Tammy, our moderator, uh, pinball, uh, pinball Cowboy, uh, huge. So pinball is really getting popular so fast, and it's actually getting popular to the point they're they're taking old pinball machines 
and actually refurbishing them and cleaning them up and trying to fix them just to get them back on, onto the floor. So yeah. uh, we're seeing more pinball machines like never yeah, before. It, and to give you from my up. side, guys, you know, the dealers that I buy these machines from, um, they will not sell pinballs except back to casinos now. It's the only game that casinos demand back from them. Um, I'm able to get top dollars and everything else, but pinball is out of the question. And it's funny because I get emails weekly saying, All right, I'm looking for a pinball machine. I'm like, you're only going to find it in the casino. You're not going to find it in your house. So <laughs> unfortunately, they are buying them back and they're paying Very good money so. for them. Believe me. I'm going to take, I'll take one more, Go Mark, and then I'll, I'll hand good. it off to you. Uh, you're Jackpot good. Gucci slots. Uh, good question. Do you ever get negative feedback from the casinos because of the insider information you share with the game, uh, the gambling public? No. So the thing is, is we actually have a very good, uh, we have a very good reputation, not just within the industry, but I'll, I'll kind of break this down for you guys. So we have obviously become an, a very popular channel. We have grown very quickly and there's a several reasons behind that. We have the backing of almost every single large uh, other slot channel out there. The reason being is because the information that we give is helpful and correct, and it helps them. Um, we have the backing of manufacturers because the information that we give is technically accurate. We have the backing of casinos because the information that we give is honest, and also it's transparent, and it also helps, it also helps people to manage their money. Guys, casinos now are very, very big, and the regulations are so strict on making sure that people play responsibly. And that's what we teach here. We teach about playing responsibly, playing within your budget, and how to identify what's going to be good and what's not. So we actually get a huge positive feedback from casinos, from manufacturers, from gaming commissioners, from other slots channels. We get a huge amount of positivity uh, feedback. Um, never have we gotten anything negative from any casinos um, because also because we do know the insides, you know, we know, you know, we can't, you know, we can't go and tell you like, oh, this is where they keep their security cameras. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what's important to you, the player, what, what can you do as, you know, as the player to make a difference and how you can manage that budget, uh, manage that budget better. So we get a huge amount of support for them uh, from, you know, from them for that reason. So very good question. Appreciate it. Yeah. Good question. And uh, Nicholas says, is it better to play hundred dollar times one credit on pinball or $25 at two credit? I heard if you get the pinball bonus, regardless of shots, the amount is already predetermined. That's not true for the number of shots. It's, it's definitely could be different. So I'm assuming you're talking about the two credit max bet version of $25 pinball. If that is the case, absolutely you should play the 25 times two because I think your bonus is going to be higher. Now, well, now you know, let me think about that. So the average bonus is around 80, I think it's 85 credits for pinball. About 80. 80, about 80. So that's two thousand dollars for a twenty-five dollar. That would mean on the hundred dollar you would have to land in something higher than the five, ten, or the fifteen on the initial bet. But you're also betting fifty dollars less on the twenty-five times two. That's a tough one. I, you know, I, I still think I would play the twenty-five times two to get the four shots instead of the one shot on hundred dollars. Um, though that's tough, though. That's really close when you kind of break down the math on that. So, yeah, I'd still go with the twenty-five. Personally, I would go with the twenty-five. Yeah, and then what? Honestly, what I would what I would do is I would go with the twenty-five at first. And then if you get a pinball, then up it to 100 or 50 right. and you utilize that just so you can play max, um, right. max on playing max on the pinball is always going to be your best bet. Uh, yeah. Playing one credit on pinball just is never to get the ma so maximum I, return. Yeah. yeah, you have to play. Max. I stick with 25. Yep. Uh, we have a super sticker coming in from Justin 1999 super sticker. Justin, thank you so much. We really do greatly appreciate thank that. Uh, thank you very much, guys. And um and uh, comment here from uh, Lori Mac. Transparent, transparent honesty, so refreshing, guys. That's what we strive for. That's what we strive for, and we, you know, we're doing better at it each and every day. Um, you know, if there is ever information that we don't know, we will go and find it, and we will straight up tell you. You know what? We don't know the answer to that yet. Let us do some research, and we'll get back to you. We don't make stuff up on this channel, so uh, guys, we really do appreciate it. 
uh, very much so. So thank you. Thank you guys for all of you, for all of you guys. You guys are the reason why we do what we do um, and why we absolutely get into the meat and potatoes and try to get you guys all of the best information that we can. And we have some really really exciting stuff coming up. So uh, if you're if you're out there watching this and you haven't yet subscribed, be sure that you subscribe. And also, guys, hit that little bell for those notifications because we have some awesome videos coming up within the next couple of weeks and uh, next month as well. Really cool. We're going to be doing more stuff, more videos that nobody else has the ability to do and that's never been done before. So uh, we're super excited about that, guys. And thank you, Lori. Yeah, thank you. Very nice comment. Um, just kind of a comment to our opening um, opening topic. Casey says, yeah, it doesn't help. I have a 20-minute casino drive away. It's tempting to visit, but at the same time, it's easy to leave on a big win. Yeah, it's, it's difficult um, having a local casino. I mean, especially if you don't have the strong willpower, that's where you can get into trouble. But you're right. There is a flip side to it. Yeah, you could go there and double your money every day and, you know, make a profit, but we know how slot machines work. That's not going to work in the long term. <laughs> so it's all about, you know, not, not trying to chase your, your losses. And if your casino is 20 minutes away, you're more likely to chase your losses than if it was a long, yeah. long drive or long flight. So it's always, it's always a hard one. Yeah, <laughs> it's it is. trying to balance. It really I mean, is. you know, with, with me, like my casino is two hours away and, and I, I get it because I drive two hours and then that happened to me this last visit. I walked in the door and of course I always go to pinball. I always go to pinball first and you know, I always play it at 10 or $20 DNOM and I walk in the door and I hit pinball in the second spin. I got a jackpot and I'm like, well, I've only been here for three minutes. So I'm like, <laughs> do I go home or what do I do? Right, of course right. I stay. A uh, question from Francis. Francis, uh, welcome uh, to the chat. Uh, question, please. I want a jackpot on triple diamond. Congratulations. It was a $20 max. However, I only played $10 uh, but I won. If I were playing Max, would I have won? Would I have won more money? Thank you kindly. If you were playing Max, um, then yes, you would have won more money on that game. Um, but still a good return. I mean, hey, a jackpot's a jackpot. And that's one thing, too. A lot of times, like with the really high limit, high denom machines. And again, it all depends on the game. But in this particular instance of Triple Diamond, it's OK to play. It's OK to play 10. You know, if it's if it's two credit, you know, twenty dollar max, it's perfectly okay to play ten. You're still going to get a good amount. You're still have a chance to get a jackpot, just like Francis did. Um, so on that particular game, you know, you don't have to play max. Uh, if it was top dollar, it would be a different story. Um, then you would want to play max. But uh, would you have won more money? Uh, yes, Francis, you would have. But that's not the point. You still went home with. You still won that's a right. jackpot on that machine, so that's still good. Um, you know, and that's, that's half the battle right there. So congratulations really to you on that. Thank you for sharing. And, uh, Ricky Lane says, bought a gamble box at a garage sale years ago. Best gambling investment I ever made guys. They really are. Yes. And for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, it's a box that you leave the key at home, but you can put your bills inside of it and you can't get them out unless you're super creative. But <laughs> if the idea, <laughs> the idea is I will not share the story, Brantley. Um, the idea is that there's a cash box that you can't get into, but you can put money into and you leave your keys at home. And so you get a good hand pay or you get a jackpot, you double your money, you stuff your winnings in there and you can't get into it until you get back home. So yeah, it's a good, it's definitely yeah. a good, good thing to have. And Very I'll good take, investment. I'll take another one here from uh, Ron Garris. I know you have stated that the Will of Fortune machines are high volatile machines. I haven't been on seven cruises. I guess I was lucky as every trip, I won an average of two thousand dollars playing only those machines. Yeah, you were pretty lucky, I gotta say. Yep, that's uh, good. Yeah, pretty well, much what, every what cruise. What denomination ship was it? Yeah, that's true. Because the um, thing is, guys, you know, we talk. I'm I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, Mark. you're good, man. You're um, good. You know, we we talked about this, and I actually have mentioned it in every single Wheel of Fortune video that I did, and every time I talked about Wheel of Fortune, if you play, if you find a one hundred dollar single credit Wheel of Fortune, it can actually be beneficial. Right. But other than that, you know, it depends. Now, if you're like playing a twenty-five or a fifty-dollar wheel of fortune, you're getting closer to that beneficial level. But you know, anything less than that, you know, is usually not beneficial. So, uh, wheel of fortune, you know, it's a general. Yes, it is a very high volatile game. But generally speaking, stay away from it. However, there are a couple different versions out there that uh, can be beneficial to you. Well said. 
Uh, uh, question, uh, question from Dante. And now this one uh, gets, uh, gets a little interesting. So awesome discussion, guys. Thanks. You're very welcome. Quick question. Uh, it's not going to be a quick answer on this one. Uh, on the mark hit by machines, I assume that the RNG creates the target number to hit, uh, but is it ever near the lower uh, lower amount of the must hit by range? So you are absolutely 100% correct. It, I don't know if you guessed it or if you know exactly how they work, but once a must hit by number is hit, so once a jackpot gets hit on a must hit by, then the RNG will generate out a random number within that range. So like, let's say, for example, if it's a $10,000 must hit by and the starting number is 9,000, what happens is, you know, the, the last RNG, let's say it picked 9,500. So it gets the 9,500, it hits, and then the RNG will, you know, go through its little Rolodex and it'll pick out a random number. And let's say it'll pick uh, 93, 570, and 20 cents. That's exactly how they work. So you don't know it, when that is going to be. Now, the second part to your question, has uh, does it ever near the low amount of the must hit by range? Yes, because it is random. It is random. So technically, it can pull any number. So you could have a must hit by that has a complete history of, oh, this machine's always hit around 94, or this machine's always hit around 93. But that's not always true because the thing is, is that RNG can pick any number. It could pick 99999. It could also pick $9,000 in one set. So it can pick any number in between that range, and that is exactly how they work. And it's Great evenly question. distributed, too. So that it's means evenly it's distributed, completely random between that range. So, And that's why we say the higher the number gets, the higher your chances are, because it's already gone through all those other right. options. So it's exactly limiting right. the options left that it has to choose from. Um, so, yes, very, very good question on that. And uh, Bonus Hunters Entertainment says, what about the layouts of certain machines in rows or in quads? Are they programmed to hit differently, say, bingo versus standalone? So the, the one thing, let, let's not talk about bingo for a second. Let's talk about slot machines. They are not programmed to hit at certain times or certain number of spins or certain dollar amounts or anything like that. They are programmed to play out a certain way, just like you would flip a coin. We talk about that a lot because it's a pretty good comparison. It plays out exactly the same every time you hit the spin button. But the way that the slot machine works is that the random number generator is picking from a set of options that the reels can land on. And those are called virtual tables or virtual reels. And so it's the game table. It is what is on the par sheet. It is what decides how the game is going to play out. And so they build those in a way that when they run a simulation and it's been played 10 million times, it will spit out a certain average theoretical payout, 96.23%. And then they tell the casino operator that this is a 92.3% option that you can pick from. It does not mean that it's always going to be at 92.86 or whatever percent. It's going to be low. It's going to be high. It's going to go back and forth. But the more spins that you have, the closer and closer it will get to its target because of the averages. And so the one thing that we want you to not get fixed up in is that the machines are scheduled to pay at certain times or after a certain amount of money. I hear this a lot where people will say, man, last night was so busy. So much money got put into those machines, but nobody hit jackpots. They are ready to go. They're ready to start paying out because everybody put all this money in. They're going to play exactly the same way as they played the night before when everybody is putting the money in. It makes no difference at all. That's not how the games play out. So don't get in your mind that anything's due at a certain time or a casino can say, we need to, this machine has been on the take for a while. We need to start giving back to the player. It, there's no fine tune control like that. Um, that's just not how games are programmed. So hopefully that helps. Very well said, Mark. Thanks. Very, very well said. <laughs> Um, let's see, uh, comment here from Ruben. Uh, thanks to your videos. I hit a jackpot last night on top dollar and one on triple diamond. You guys are the best. Well, thank you so much. Awesome. And a big congratulations to you. Um, guys, as a reminder, we do publish your testimonials on our website at rope, the Uh, be sure also, uh, check out guys. If you have not been to our website, 
lately, uh, ropethejackpot.com. There is so much information on there. We not only share your testimonials, but we have frequently asked questions that are listed on there. There is a casino guide. You can actually look to see what class a casino license holds. And that information is actually directly from the federal government. So we have a, the list from the federal government of what license each casino holds. And that's all available on our website at ropethejackpot.com. Um, that feature is only for tribal casinos. And then we also have our products that you can help support the channel and your testimonials. So check it out, ropethejackpot.com. A lot of really good, valuable information on there. And congrats on your win. We really yeah, appreciate awesome. it. Thank you for sharing. And uh, Lay has a good question here. So Ben watched every episode. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot to take in. So really appreciate that. Uh, just got back from the win. Only played pinball and top dollar. Well, you would fit in with us, I'm sure. <laughs> Can you explain how you know when a machine is trying to balance? I watched that video already. So go back and watch um, a video from about a month ago now. I think it's called How Slot Machines Work. And I explain or try to explain in there how they balance. The thing is to try to remember is that balance is not an active activity that a slot machine goes through. It's not something that the slot machine actively tries to do over time. It happens naturally over time based on how the game is programmed and how the random number generator picks from certain, you know, style or not styles, but certain uh, real stops on the reels. So go watch that video. I think it might help you out a little bit. If you already, already have watched us, uh, already, have already watched it, post a comment over there and I'll see it. And I'll go in there and try to help a little bit more. But thank you so much for your generosity and watching all that content because it's a lot. Yes, thank lot you very much. In. We appreciate it. And, you know, uh, guys, kind of building on that, too, um, you know, and, and I, I say this a lot, you know, learning anything is a process. You know, you're never going to you're never going to pick up something right away. You know, if you're trying to fix something on your vehicle and you go to go to YouTube to watch a tutorial on how to do it, you're not instantly going to become an expert mechanic after watching that. It takes time. It takes skill. It takes a lot of, you know, just natural repetition, practice, building up, knowing what to look for. Um, when I go into a casino and I look at a slot machine, I can take in all of the information in a split second because I know what to look for. I'm looking at the pay table, the DNOM, you know, all the different variability, you know, variable factors in there. But uh, for you guys, it's, it's going to take some time, you know, and it took me some time. It took me several years to actually perfect. And, you know, I'm still learning. Everybody's still learning. Um, and that's the that's the biggest thing is, you know, learning never stops, guys. So, it, you know, it takes it absolutely does take time. Um, so always just keep that and keep that in mind, guys. Uh, we have a $49.99 super chat coming in from Justin. Wow. Justin, thank you so thank much. You, we really appreciate it. Uh, that is really bright pink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my local casino has a hundred dollar and a fifty uh fifty dollar denom triple diamond machine. Should I play the one hundred dollar at one credit or max bet the fifty at three credits max bet? Hmm. Depends on how much of a, like, for that top line jackpot, you know, how much on that for the top. Animal. Yeah, for the top line. The thing is, so honestly, in, in a case like this, I would almost say the $100 at the that's single what was, credit. That's what I was going to say. Um, because yep. you would be saving $50 and $100 denom. Typically, most $100 denom slot machines are single credit. Most are, with the exception of, of course, you know, you've got your pinballs and your top dollars and stuff like that. I would, I would, I would recommend one hundred dollar denom at single credit. That's what I would do. Yep, um, um, that's exactly, total that's agreeance. exactly yep. what I, that's exactly <laughs> what I would do. Yeah, um, and I'll take another one. Thank you so Go much for, for your super chat. We really do absolutely appreciate it. Um, the, all of the super chats and super stickers go out to greatly help the channel, guys. guys. Uh, we are improving every single day, and we're trying to bring you guys more stuff. And you know, we're we're trying to travel out more and do more things. So, all everything like that, your viewership, your subscriptions is very, very appreciated. Uh, Shannon asks, if a casino has a smoking area, are you likely to win less in the smoking areas? Not really. The only caveat that I would say to this is typically. Typically in smoking areas, it tends to be lower denomination machines. It tends to be a lot of penny machines. The reason being is because a lot of times in smoking areas, people just want to have a cigarette and they want to chill there. And they're, they're not looking to go and gamble the big bucks. They're just like, oh, you know what? I'm going to step over to the smoking area and have a, have a cigarette and I'll play a penny machine while I wait. Um, are you less likely to win? 
not because it's a smoking area, but look at the machines in that smoking area. Because a lot of times it, smoking areas do tend to have penny machines, a lot more penny and low denom, which because of that, you know, because of the that reason would be, you know, less wins in that particular area. So good, uh, good question. Very good. And uh, P. Cross says, I just left the casino, put $20 in a triple diamond machine and turned it into $100. That machine was hot. I didn't want to leave. No, you did the right thing. It doesn't matter if it's hot or cold because there's no such thing. I know this is like one of the oldest things that have been around for machines is that this machine is either hot or cold. Uh, I hate to break it to you guys, but every single spin is a completely separate event. There are no like surges of hotness and surges of coldness and all oh, this one's ice cold. You should never play that one. Um, but you did the right thing. You ignored all that and you left. Hopefully um, you left with your hundred dollars after putting twenty dollars investment in. So very good. Like seeing that. And I'll take another one real quick, just a comment. Uh, Terry J says, I was there in Oklahoma at Windstar the other day. It was okay. There are a lot of others I like better. I personally don't like the way it's set up and not that great of energy. That's just me. It's just really big. Um, and I think that turns a lot of people off. I've heard it's very smoky also, um, although I think they have a smoke-free area now um, for what somebody told me. But, you know, I think a lot of people will get turned off by these by gigantic casinos and I think I would, too. I kind of like the smaller, more personable, you know, casinos. That's why we talk about the Rose so much, because it is that way. Um, but I, it's a personal choice. Some people like to have an infinite supply of machines to play. And so there's kind of both sides of the coin there. But, yeah, totally hear what you're saying there, Terry. Very good. A uh, question here from uh, AM. Mark, do you know the average on pinball three credit uh, $10 denom? I believe it's one in 64. Is that correct, 62. Mark? Or is it one in 62? I think it's 62. Um, yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, that's information obviously direct from, uh, from the manufacturers. That's the average. Now, always when we're talking averages, guys, um, the biggest thing is don't get caught up in thinking that, you know, oh, if I do at least 62 spins, I'm going to get a pinball. Um, don't, don't get caught up in that. Cause that's, you know, that's just a general average. It's not saying that you will get, uh, you will get a pinball within that spin. It's just the average of the machine. Um, I'll take another one really quick, uh, here, uh, Shirley double, uh, or Shirley 08 question. How do you know when a progressive is maxed out? Are there presets amounts, uh, preset amounts for all denoms? So I showed this in one of the videos that we talked about lightning link, um, you have to look at the verbiage. So again, every um, every everything in the casino and every slot game is very much legal regulation. It's all you know. Everything comes down to the lawyers. Everything. When you actually look on Lightning Link, because people will see like you know they'll see the the mini and the minor, and they say, oh, it's you know that that's capped. That's that's a capped progressive. It's actually not a progressive. If you look at the verbiage, it will say minor bonus or mini bonus, whereas the other one will say major progressive or grand progressive. So again, it's all about the lawyers and how they word it. So on that particular game, those are uh, stationary prizes. Um, some versions can be different, but again, you have to look at the verbiage of the game. Now, how do you know when a progressive is maxed out? Really easiest way to tell is if it's at a stationary number that's not climbing anymore. You know, if it's, you know, if it was at, 99999 and then it rolled to 10,000 and stopped then chances are that that's the cap out point is the 10,000. Now the cool part about that is any progressive that caps it's still accumulating in the background money beyond that point. And then what happens is when somebody does hit that progressive and it resets then the additional amount added to that gets added to the starting point. So that's kind of a fun little cool uh cool fact about that. And I'm going to share Very something real quick because I was incorrect. It is one in 64. One so in here, 64. I was this, correct. <laughs> you were right, Brantley. <laughs> I was I right. Confused. Yeah, that's all right. So, but... Yeah, this is directly from uh, IGT Barcrest guys. These are the makers of uh, pinball. And so the bonus frequency is one in 64. Average pay is 82 in the bonus. So there you go. Very good. Thanks for sharing that, Mark. Yep, no problem. I, I was like, oh, I bet he's right. I bet he's right. <laughs> I had to go look. <laughs> well, I could have sure swore, but, you know, it's yeah. it's obviously. It's, it's hard very, to keep uh, track of all the top because we get the top dollar question a lot, and there's so many different versions. And But, 
Yeah, I stand corrected. Exactly. Uh, you can take another one if you want. I, I was busy pulling. All right, let, uh, let me go back uh, um, back through here really quick because uh, I I had a question that I was looking. I was actually looking for a particular question, and uh, uh, I skipped over it. I'll take a. I'll, I'll acknowledge some uh, some new people while we're here. New subscriber, welcome. Uh, your content is great. I'm new to Vegas and needed slot tips. Wish me luck on my first hand pay. Best of luck, luck to you. Best of luck to you. Hope you hit it out. Uh, of the have park. fun. You know, ha yeah. you know, have fun and let us let us know. Let us know how it went. Um, you know, uh, one thing I want to remind a lot of the new people that we have on here. We have wow. We have 438 of you watching right now. That is awesome, guys. Thank you so uh, much. Welcome to all of the new subscribers out there. Guys, if you go to um, – Mark, can you pull up our main YouTube uh, main YouTube page for a screen share really quick? If you go to our – uh, if you go to our main YouTube page, the home page, and it's easiest and best to see on the computer, we have everything broken down by playlist. The sec I believe it's the second playlist down is our free lesson series on learning about how to pick the best slot machines. Now, that is a series. So there's seven episodes. If you watch all episodes one through episode seven. So, yeah, right here on the uh, on the list, it's the second one down. Uh, lesson series on picking slots. Um, they all have the episode numbers on there. Start at episode number one and go all the way to episode number seven. They're not that long of episodes, but they're super informative and they're made to be in order of exactly what you should be watching for to pick the best slot machines. So guys, go on there, check that out. Second, uh, second tab, free lesson series on picking slots. Make sure to watch all of the episodes one through seven because that's really the only way it makes sense and watch them in order because that'll help you out tremendously. Right. But welcome to all of our new people. We really appreciate it. Um, and we are uh, we still got so many questions coming in and uh, we're, we're still going strong. So we're yep. still going to keep uh, keep some more questions really quick before you go. Uh, NJ Slot Guy is here. Uh, welcome, NJ. We appreciate having up, you here. Man? Guys, go up, check man? out. Uh, NJ Slot Guy, he has a very awesome slot channel. Be sure Absolutely. to check him out. Lots of great slot play uh, on his channel. Uh, very, very, very great guy as well. So welcome, yeah. NJ. Glad you're here. Uh, the cow and NJ says the cowboy is crushing <laughs> it. Hey, we are trying our best. Uh, we are really trying our best. We are in our final countdown now to 100,000 subscribers, guys. So we only have a little over 20,000 people to go before we hit that 100,000 mark uh, for before our one year anniversary. So uh, thank you all. Thank you all very much. So and thank you to the 2 million people that watched our TikTok reel just last week. Uh, thank you to our 75,000 new subscribers on TikTok just this week and to our 14,000 new subscribers on Facebook. Guys, we really appreciate each and every one of you, and we're going to be bringing you the best content. Uh, we're really stepping up the game. Um, and again, uh, new subscribers, uh, D. Willie, uh, welcome to you, sir. Appreciate having you here. Uh, very much grateful for that. So uh, guys, if, you, uh, you know, if you're you know if you out there watching and you haven't yet subscribed, be sure to subscribe because we are on our final countdown now to 100,000 subscribers. Um, so thank you to everybody. Yep. And, uh, Stuart has a Stuart Chambers says, I like the Lord of the Rings machine. Uh, you have, is it a low volatile game? So he's talking about this one right here. Um, if you could find it, I think Cosmo still has one left and they're the last one that I think has it. Maybe some, um, some of the other casinos off strip might still have those, but, um, I'd say it's pretty middle of the road. Um, it's still a classic three reel game. Um, I've had some really good bonuses on it and the bonus frequency is pretty high. Um, but it is a progressive game, and so that always adds to a progressive game, plus it's also a licensed theme game. So those two things kind of make it a little bit higher in volatility. But if you can find it, play it, because regardless of volatility, it's a fun game. So I would definitely recommend it. Absolutely. <clears throat> uh from uh, Jessica, hey guys, I listened to your videos on the drive to the casino to remind me to play as smart as possible. Well, thank you so much, Jessica. We really do, uh, we really do appreciate it. Best of luck to you uh, heading out to uh, heading out to your local casino out there. Um, and uh, speaking of casino, uh, member uh, uh, member here uh, just moved to LA. What's a good casino around uh, Los Angeles? 
Thanks. Um, I am not sure about that. Um, the only casinos that I have ever been out to uh, in California have been Agua Caliente in Palm Springs. And I think I've been to y uh, Yamava once. Once. But Palm Springs, uh, uh, Agua Caliente in Palm Springs, I've been there quite a bit. Um, guys, if there's anybody in the chat right now from the Los Angeles area, um, let them know what is your favorite casino uh, in the chat. Uh, let's, let's try to help each other out a little bit. So guys, if you're from the Los Angeles area, uh, let him know. Uh, absolutely. All right. And Lisa 888 says, well, when you get a bonus to select coins, is it already decided what progressive you will win before you select? So we get this question a lot, but, uh, here's the best way that you can figure that out. If after you pick your three matches of the coins, if it flips all the rest of the coins over and shows you what was underneath them, you were in full control. But if it doesn't, if it ends the bonus right after you pick the three, then it was already predetermined and it didn't matter what you picked. So you can use that to really figure that out. There's not many that are not predetermined these days. They're mostly all predetermined. So, Good question. Yep. Uh, question from Brent. Love the channel, guys. Love the content. Thank you. You're very welcome. What are your thoughts on slot machines like Diamond Queen? So Diamond Queen, you know, it, it comes down to that volatility factor. Diamond Queen is an extremely high volatility Very game high. Yeah. because when you actually get the bonus, not only is it hard to get the bonus, but when you actually get the bonus, you're automatically holding three reels out of five as wild. So right. that, you know, and you have a possibility for re-trigger. Diamond Queen is a really hard uh, really hard bonus to get, and it is extremely high in volatility. But as we remember, as we talked about, higher volatile uh, can oftentimes, you know, it's it's harder to hit, but it can offer a high reward. If you find Diamond Queen and a really high denomination or a really high bet amount, and you decide to play it, if you get the bonus, you're going home with a jackpot and probably a pretty big jackpot at that. But it's getting the bonus that is the hard part. Right. Uh, so that's that's my thought. Uh, Mark, do you have any thoughts on Diamond Queen? I know you've actually it's, got it's it the, there. Yeah, I do have yeah. it. It's it's brutal. Uh, there is one that even tops that, and that is Mega Vault. Do not play Mega Vault. <laughs> I think I had a video. I never posted it because it was just too incredibly boring to watch. But I played it, and I actually put it on autoplay, and it played for forty five minutes without a bonus. And then when I finally got the bonus, I got double my money, and that was it. That yeah, game is awful. brutal, so do not play Mega Vault. <laughs> yes, there are some big hits on awful. Vegas or on uh, YouTube uh, with Mega Vault, but man, it, it can be a very difficult one. So, yeah, but Diamond Queen's the same. I'll take one more really quick, if you don't it. mind, from uh, from Cora. Uh, what tips do you have for Dancing Drums? So Dancing Drums, again, it's also a very high volatile game. It has no pay lines whatsoever. Uh, you know, they call it real, real ways. Um, as long as the symbols fall in the first three consecutive reels or more, you get paid for it. However, I will say this. I actually have a positive thing to say about this game. So when Dancing Drums first came out, we were... The casino that I worked at was one of the first casinos to get it. And it became an extremely popular game really quick. So, you know, it, it's kind of funny. You look at games in terms of popularity and like right now, Dragon Link and Lightning Link is the most popular. But before that, Dancing Drums and 88 Fortunes was the most popular. And then, you know, before that, the most popular was um, China Shores. China Shores was the big thing before Dancing Drums. Um, I have seen the grand go a lot on dancing drums, a lot. And the thing is, is most all the time that I've seen the grand go on dancing drums, it's somebody betting 88 cents, the lowest amount. So guys, my advice to you on dancing drums is, um, play only focus on your budget. Don't focus on anything else with that slot machine because the line, the line hits can be good. But you qualify for those progressives as long as you're betting the 88 cent minimum. So play the 88 cent minimum. Use it as a use it as a time killer because you can still get those. You know, a lot of people think that they can't get the grand or they can't get the you know you know the minor or anything playing minimum bets. You actually can on dancing drums. It happens a lot. Now, if you do read the game rules on it, it will say that you increase your chances of getting a bonus round 
doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win, but it means you increase your chances of getting a bonus round or the pot closing the higher amounts that you bet. Um, so my advice, focus just on your budget, just yes. on your budget on yes. that one. And um, a follow up to that is 88 Fortunes pretty good. 88 Fortunes was the predecessor to Dancing Drums. Right. Yeah, just be careful with the marketing uh, stuff on those machines, guys, because we've, we've talked about that a lot when they say that um, when you're looking down at the bet panel and it's like a nightmare, you I can't figure out what to bet because there's all this, this stuff to entice you to bet that max, you know, better chances at bonus, better hit, chances at hitting that progressive, more lines, all that kind of stuff. You got to remember anytime they mention like better chances of anything, it could be a very, very small chance and they could put that on there. So always bet within your budget. Don't go crazy. Like Brantley said, you know, that's the most important part. Don't get, try to try not to get enticed by those bigger amounts. Cause you might, it's not going to be a dramatically better chance. Let me just put it that way. It will not be a dramatically exactly. better chance. So uh, and a real quick comment from Rick James. Hey Rick, how you doing? Also MGM casinos match Royal Caribbean cruise tier status. So that's what we were talking about earlier. So good to yeah. know on that. Awesome. Uh, if you have one, Brantley, go ahead. Oh, we do have a 999 super chat coming in from Lisa 88888. I can't talk today. <laughs> Lisa 888, 999 super chat. Lisa, thank you so much. I will be in Vegas uh, in a couple of weeks. Hope to uh, put all of your tips to good use. Thank you for what you do. You are very, very welcome. Guys, we love what we do. We love what we do. We love bringing you guys the, the tips and bringing you guys the facts. And the, the biggest reward for me, and I know it's the same for Mark, the biggest reward for us is hearing from you guys. You know, when somebody comes up to me and they're like, I never won a jackpot in my whole life. And I was constantly spending money at the casino and I watched your videos and I hit my first ever jackpot. That is what fills us with joy because we love to see you guys succeeding, you know, and you know, we always, we always like to put the caveat with it as it's always still gambling. We want you guys to be careful. We want you guys to be responsible, but that gives us the biggest amount of joy is seeing you guys succeed and knowing that we're able to uh, we're able to help you guys. Guys, I've gotten so many stories from people that, um, you know, they've won a jackpot and it, you know, helps them, you know, either purchase something that they've always wanted to purchase or helped, you know, helps them in some way, shape or form or helps their family or helped them with Christmas or help them, you know, help them with something. And that to me is my biggest pride and is my biggest joy with yes. this channel. So guys, thank you so much. And a new subscriber also coming in, Donnie B. Thank you so much, Donnie, for your subscription. We really appreciate it. Uh, is Wheel of Fortune uh, spin real predetermined? Yes, it is. The second you hit that button, it is predetermined. Yeah, it's not that. like the game show, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not really like not. The game show, unfortunately. Yeah. And then... Uh... Charlene uh, says, I just won $1,000 major last night on Dragon Link game with 50 cent bet. Uh, congratulations. Nice. Congratulations. You know what? Let's do something fun to wrap this, this up. I didn't tell Brantley this, but everybody <laughs> posts their biggest win, and we're just going to roll through and put them on the screen so everybody can see. So in the comments below or Let's in the that. live chat, tell us your biggest win and the name of the, the machine that you play, played to get that win. Uh, we were very interested to see how you guys have done. And while those are coming in, we can take uh, a couple more questions here. Uh, let's see. We got one from uh, XDJ and Gambler, uh, Straight Shooters here on this channel. Thanks. You guys are so very, very welcome. All right. Let's share some of your stories. Yeah, to round this out. And hey, you know what? Maybe this can be a new thing. Maybe we yeah. can end every single live stream on a positive note of just running through here. Uh, so let's start right at the top. 14 grand on Betty Boop. Nice. Uh, 5,000 pink diamonds. Uh, we got another one there. Um, we got 16,000 <laughs> 16, double diamond. That's awesome. We got 5,000 on, Go uh, 5, on Buffalo. Uh, 1,300 on Buffalo. Wow, we got so many uh, so many coming in here, guys. Uh, hey, 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 Helen. Uh, 20,000 uh, 20, on Mega Meltdown. Um, we got uh, 280 on 88 fortunes. That's awesome, guys. We love seeing these. This is a yep. great way to, to read round a couple out. off here. So, uh, yeah, big flat couple 9,000 on top dollar. Love that. 
Uh, Jimmy the Cricket, 25, 14,000 on Wild Cherry in Reno. Awesome. Nice. Brent Baker, Double Diamond, 5 Denom, uh, $200. That's great. Poker Stars, 1440. And I'll let you take the next one, Bradley. You can read some off there. All right. Hey, my favorite game of pinball. <laughs> you, that's why make, you let me. You had to one. read that one. Got all read that one. three double diamonds, twenty four hundred dollars. Awesome. That is awesome. Five uh, K on Wheel of Fortune, six thousand dollars. Red Hot Sevens, thirty seven sixty seven uh, on a hit by machine. Awesome. Uh, to the stars, uh, eight uh, eight thousand on hundred dollar Wheel of Fortune. Um, uh, the alien scratcher learning from your tips. I won 5,000 on double diamond hundred dollar wow. Dinom guys. That's, these are awesome. Great. Uh, Tracy 20,850 on pinball, uh, 8,100 from Joyce there on triple stars, uh, 1745 East wheel of Fort, uh, uh, far East wheel of fortune. Uh, Danny B 22,000 and 5,000 back to back Donny B. Uh, yeah. Back to back at Foxwoods. Hey, got to do awesome. your backup. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's awesome. Right. Backup spins. All right, Mark, I'll let you take a couple. Okay, sure. Alf 2009, my second biggest win at Buffalo Max, $800. Congratulations. Very nice. Andrea says 4K Kino, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> that's for you, Brantley. <laughs> yeah, all right. It's for all the Kino haters out there. <laughs> Brantley. All right, let's see. We have uh, Marcia, $2,000 triple diamond on Wheel of Fortune. Oh, very cool. And uh, Darren says $750-ish, uh, Return of an Invader from Planet Moolah. That's a fun game. That's really good. I bet you had a ton of free games. I've seen that on that one. Jose Valdez, 24200 double gold progressive. We have a progressive winner in the house. Awesome. Nice. And Lisa, 888, 2200 on Let It Ride the Table Game. Not a slot player yet. That's okay. Warm up to it. And uh, Deano says 15,000 on quick hit. And go ahead, Brantley, take the next ones. All right, Alan, uh, two five thousand dollar jackpots. Uh, one at five dollar three four five times pay, and the other one twenty five dollar double red, white, and blue. Awesome. Uh, 33,000 on diamonds. Wow. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, 2600 screaming eagles. Uh, 1800 on the Munsters. Uh, March of 2012 hit 19,000. Uh, 117 at Wild Horse Pass. I, hey, I've been to Wild Horse Pass. It's a great casino. Uh, 2200 on Nine Line Black Diamond. Uh, 4300 on Moneyball at 50 cents. Wow. 9000 9, on Money Bags at Windstar. 5000 Quick Hits. 1150 Buffalo. Uh, 3K on Wheel of Fortune here. Um, and uh, we got another one. Uh, have never won a hand paid jackpot. Uh, biggest ever was 1060. Hey, you know what? Sometimes those under the under the radar hand pays are uh, are very uh, very very good. Rick James China Shores. Or that's that's his home machine though, right, Rick? <laughs> don't don't be tricking us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Rick. Is that is that your machine at home? I think it's is your machine your... at home. Prove me wrong. <laughs> uh, well, you know, hey, those China Shores free games go forever. Yeah, that's you true. You really never know. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll, we'll take a couple more and then we'll round out here. 424 of you, uh, in the live stream. So Mark, uh, go ahead. We'll, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll take our last here. couple. Uh, Megara miss, miss, I can't say your name. I'm really sorry. 1440 on poker stars. It's good. J Justin white, 2750 on blazing sevens, 2320 on dancing drums and spin it grand. I have seen that one. Uh, Scott, very nice win there. And uh, George, fifteen hundred, very nice. Cheap slots and cheap gambling, eleven thousand nine fifty. Ultimate Fire Link and three dollars spin, two cent denomination, very cool. And Leanne, twelve hundred on hot hits, and we'll wrap it up right here with Debbie Delon, sixteen hundred on Brantley's favorite pinball. Pinball. Gotta so congrat pinball. congratulations to everybody again. You know we love the positivity. Always play within your means. Don't go crazy because you see these big jackpots in here. You know, yeah. every little bit. I mean, people that win two hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars, that is perfectly fine, and you should be very excited because it's all in relation to your bet size. So I just want to throw that out there. You see some big numbers, and that's awesome. But remember, stay within your budget and have a good time. And we love seeing all those big hits. That's really nice, guys. Congratulations. Absolutely. Guys, thank you so much for a wonderful live stream. We had a lot of fun with you today. As a reminder, our live streams take place every single Sunday 
uh, every single Wednesday. And if you are a member of the channel, you get an added bonus live stream uh, tomorrow, member Mondays. So guys, thank you so much once again. Uh, be sure to check out the website, ropethejackpot.com for so many free resources, guides, and a whole lot more. We will catch you again on the next episode. As always, stay safe. Best of luck to you. And we will see you again next live stream.